Hello friends, welcome. Today in this class we will talk about the propensity to consume and propensity to save. In this we will understand what is the meaning of propensity to consume and propensity to save. What is the average propensity to consume and average propensity to save. And what is the marginal propensity to consume and propen marginal propensity to save. We will understand it with the help of an example also. So now let's start with it. Today first let's talk about the propensity to consume and propensity to save. Okay. Through which the people can consume or save. Of course the people have the money or the income then only they are able to consume or save. Okay. But whatever they earn, they are not able to consume whole of the income. They are able to consume the income that is after the deduction of tax that is called the disposable income. Okay? So the people are able to consume disposable income that is the deduction uh, tax is deducted from their income. Okay? So now from their income what they do with their income okay people either spend their income they consume their income from buying anything or either they save their income okay they do only two things with their income either uh, to save their uh, to save their income or to spend their income okay so the proportion of income proportion of income that is consumed is called the propensity to consume okay and the proportion of income that is saved by the person is known as the propensity to save Okay, so either the person uh, consume their money, consume their income or either they save their income. Okay, so this is about the propensity to consume and propensity to save. Now let's understand what is the average propensity to consume and what is average propensity to save. Okay, uh, we have discussed that uh, with their income, either the person will spend their income or either they save their income. Okay. So, the whatever income that is spent or the consume, okay, that is the amount of income consume that is divided by the total income that is the disposable income is called the average propensity to consume okay here they we uh, define it as the consumption as c and the total income as i so this is the average propensity to consume okay now uh, the other part of it is the saving that is the amount of income saved by the person that is divided by the total income that is known as the average propensity to save. Okay? Here the saving is defined as S and total income as I. So we can say APS that is average propensity to income as S divided by I. This is known as average propensity to save and average propensity to consume. Now let's understand what is the marginal propensity to consume and what is the marginal propensity to save. Okay. Here we know the word marginal. Marginal means the additional so what you are doing with your additional income defines the marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to save. 
let's say you have the additional income again you are doing the same thing with your additional income that is either you are spending your additional income or you are saving your additional income okay you can do only two things uh, with your additional income too okay so the uh, with your additional income you are spending some of the amount so it shows the marginal propensity to consume okay so we can define marginal propensity to consume as change in your consumption when there is change in your income okay when your income change and then your consumption is also changing then it is known as the marginal propensity to consume it is the additional consumption made through your additional income okay we are defining change over here as delta delta c divided by the delta i it is known as the marginal propensity to consume okay now let's understand what is the marginal propensity to save okay you have the additional income you are saying saving something from the additional income so the change in saving that is divided by the change in income is known as the marginal propensity to save uh, the additional saving made in your whole saving that is known as the marginal propensity to save here we can define it as delta s divided by the delta i that is known as a marginal propensity to save okay so this is about the marginal propensity to save and consume now let's understand this with the help of an example okay let's see that uh, your disposable income is of dollar 10000 let's assume okay your disposable income is of 10000 okay either you will consume your some of your income or the whole or you will save your income okay you can do only two things with it you will consume or you will save let's say you are consuming seven dollar seven thousand dollar of it your disposable income and you are saving three thousand dollar okay so we can define the average propensity to consume as that is the uh, consumption made that is amount of money spent on cons spent for consumption that is dollar seven thousand and that is divided by the dollar ten thousand. You have the point seven that is known as the average propensity to consume. Okay. The same way we can find the average propensity of saving APS that is dollar three thousand that is the amount of income used. For saving, that is dollar three thousand divided by the total income, that is of ten thousand dollar. It gives point three as the average propensity to save. Okay. So this is the calculation of APC and APS. Now we know that your disposable income is of dollar ten thousand. Okay. We have taken example that uh, your disposable income of ten thousand. You are getting additional two thousand as your income. Okay, so it is your additional income. Okay, you will as you have the additional income, you again can spend it for the consumption purpose. Okay, or you can save this money also additional income through the additional income. You also can make savings. Okay. The same thing you can do with this income also. So additional income here is a change in the income. Earlier we have just ten thousand dollar, and now we have the addition two thousand. Okay, so the change in income is two thousand. Okay, so how to calculate the marginal propensity to consume? The marginal propensity to consume is uh, we know the formula that is the change in the consumption. Okay, out of two thousand, let's say 
you are spending 1200 okay and you are saving the 800 you are doing uh, the uh, you are spending 1200 dollar and you are saving 800 dollar okay so the mpc that is change in the consumption that is of 1200 dollar and change in the income that is 2000 we have the point 6 as the mpc that is marginal propensity to consume okay now let's calculate MPS that is marginal propensity to saving that is the additional saving. We have the additional saving of rupees 800, right? Okay. So that is the change in the saving that is of 800 rupees, dollar 800. And the change in income that is over 2000, dollar 2000. We have the point 4 as MPS. Okay. Over here, we know that either we can spend the income or we can save the income. Okay. So, therefore, the MPS plus MPC is equal to the 1. Okay. So, over here, our MPC is 0 0.6 and our MPS is 0 0.4. That become 1. It is always 1. So this is about the marginal propensity to consume, marginal propensity to save and APC and APS. I hope you understand it very well. In the next class, we will talk about the short run equilibrium output. So stay tuned for that. Thank you.